Okay, so we have sprayed our DH caboose red. <clears throat> it's um, it's really I like this color a lot. Um, goes on nice, and I think it looks a little blotchy in the video. I want it a little blotchy, um, because I find that if it's some of the paint is blotchy, it weathers a little more was a little better um instead of like a solid color because it's worn it's like real world worn battle damaged blotchy that's uh this i did the the sand crawler which made it look sun faded um so it's all taped up still because i wanted to show some of the things that you that can go wrong also with a build um <clears throat> sometimes the paint don't stick well that doesn't matter that's fine but um <clears throat> sometimes the paint don't stick like i can i can tell that in here i'm gonna have some overspray that w from the the red probably went underneath the tape um kept pushing it down pushing it down but it you know sometimes it just happens so now everything goes perfect all the time and you just it happens a lot so um and plus, this is kind of like one of the more rewarding parts of of painting is taking the tape off and then taking off the um, the lake, liquid latex to show the the battle damage and the scarring. Um, with red, especially on right, well, on white, I like to use masking tape um, to help pull it off. Plus. A lot of times the, the paint will flake and end up going into the pores of the white or, you know, any light color you're doing. Um, <clears throat> it looks like shit, but it's not the end of the world because I just take masking tape and pull it off. And even when I, like if there's, there's red, some of the flakes get into the pores on the white, I still use the masking tape. And take it off. Not such, I mean, I just use um, scotch masking tape. That, that, that I find works better than using, um, let's say, your, your blue painter's tape. That don't tend to get off the, the um, latex as well as, as this. Because uh, it's very low tack. Because it doesn't, you don't want it to stick to your model. So... <clears throat> And this is where you, you know, you find out if you had um, a good primer on it or not. Because sometimes the, the paint can come off. But this here was, was done by Liquid Latex. So I wanted that battle damage um, on the white. Um, just to give it, um, do the uh, paint off. Instead of painting on the uh, damage, uh, you know, how the black... And I'll liquid latex it right here and then paint it white. And then this comes off and it's like, that's how they did it. Um, so this is, this is the kind of the fun part because you get to see what, how it went. Okay. There's some overspray right there. Um, which is good because I want to show this and I knew it was going to happen. This paint doesn't stick very well all the time. So I don't know if you can see. There's a little bit of overspray there. That's where the paint didn't, the, the tape didn't stick real good, and the paint just sprayed underneath it. So all I'll do is I'll just tape this up right here, spray it over with some white, and we're good to go. Um, a lot, like, I know on the back here, a lot of people who try to do it um, screen accurate, there was there was some overspray. Now there's some there right there. Um, not quite that much, but... It happened, the ILMers actually had some, oh, a lot of overspray on pieces of others. Overspray on the Millennium Falcon, which is right you know, right by the gun turret on top. There's some overspray that I know I intentionally did when I made mine. Um, so yeah. Um, it's kind of what I wanted to show. I know taking the tape off is boring to other people, but see what you did 
I love the contrast of this this ship. It has you know the white and the red. It's just oh, it's so striking. Um, yeah. Take all the bottom too. We'll get to that later. But let's uh, get the top off at least. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. I'll take it. All right. Here we go. So, like I said. And it also, sometimes it's hard to remember where you did the liquid latex because the paint covers it so well that sometimes I gotta go back to pictures and see where I did what. I was like, I can't really see most of this masking. Um, and it's here, but I'll have to go back to my pictures and find it because there's a lot more on here than I'm getting. Yeah, there you go. There you have it. Um, a lot less overspray than I thought. I thought there would be some more over here, but turns out I did a better job taping than I thought. So, pat on my back. Um, all right, we're going to keep going. I also painted <clears throat> the engine cans. In there. Yeah. So it is coming along. It's a beauty. I'm actually more pleased with it than I thought I would be. Um, now we're going to weather it. And finish putting lights in here. Like I said, we're going to put lights in there. And then the engine, the engine pieces go over top to cover that light. And I have wires here that go into these cans and um, make sure you take these up before you paint because then you'll lose your positive and negative on your wires kind of important <laughs> so all right I'm just gonna keep getting the rest of this uh, lake X off and um, I'll go from there so this is where we're at right now um, we got the DH boost red on. We got the cockpit almost done. Took a little bit of um, work on the side here to do some styrene so that when the when the cockpit canopy fits in, it'll pinch right in there. Uh, still gotta cut that a little bit, but for the most part, it's gonna fit in there pretty beautifully. Uh, that's nerve wracking to me for some reason because you just shave a little bit off and a little bit off and a little bit off. Uh, you don't want to cut all the way down to the line first. You want to kind of get close or not close and just put it on, fit it, see how it, how it fits in there. Because if you go too far, I mean, this is something you can't putty up and fix and replace. So you'd have to make a new one or get somebody to make a new one, which, you know, that's a pain in the butt. But, um yeah got in the cockpit there we got the little white and red spots um and i'm happy with the cockpit i i think i did pretty decent with it um now what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint on these little um colored squares um they're hard to see in this uh this is some of the reference have I have I also have some um, some pictures that I'm going off of as well you can't see them very well in, the, in, in these pictures but you can, you can see here like this is um, oh yeah I slice my finger that's always fun um, that's like a concrete and then this here this bluish color is actually armor gray that I've been told by John and he's been told by Guy. So, um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to tape up the squares and paint it. And what I want to show you something when you paint those, 
is, okay, you see how this one's darker and that one's lighter. So sometimes they can look like different colors, but they're not. Um, they're the same color, just less passes of the airbrush. Like this might be one, one pass of the airbrush. This might be two passes of the airbrush. And then it gives it a darker look. Um, or even sometimes it gives it a totally different color look. Um, I guess I could show you on the bottom of this one. Okay, so we're all taped up for the panels, the individual gray panels. Um, they are Armor Gray. Uh, that's what I use. I use I use uh, Archive X paints. Again, think I think I've said it a couple times. I am by no means good at mixing colors, um, so I like to use what's already been made specifically for Star Wars models from the original Flopals. So, um, we're all taped up. Oh, I also want to show another thing that I really, I just got it. Jason, my buddy Jason, put me onto it. Um, you know, for a year now, I've just been shaking and, you know, getting, shaking, there's a little ball in here, it shakes up the paint. Um, but I've run into a lot of issues where it like spits, my airbrush spits and causes issues and I'm just non-stop issues with my with my airbrush. So Jason told me, he's like, get one of these little vibrating mixers. And man, I'm telling you, it really made a big difference. Um, it just mixes it up real good, gets rid of all the, I don't even, it's just, I've noticed a big difference just using this thing, um, just in one day so far. And it just like vibrates your paint and mixes it up real good and gives it real a little bit smoother consistency. Um, yeah, yeah, I swear by it already, and I've only been using it for a day or so. So, um, but what we're here to show you is the different panels um, and how different panels can look like different colors with with these focal paints, um, and it basically is just passes of your airbrush right if you, you just spray one pass right gives you a color okay and then if you go over that same let it dry blow dry i'm gonna i'm gonna put a coat on each one man i'm telling you i'm having no issues with my airbrush since i use that vibrating mixer i'm loving it no issues at all um yeah, we'll just get a first coat on here, nice and smooth. No spitting, no drying up. It's been great. Make sure you get it from both sides. Like if there's texture on the on the on the t-shirt, like this here, get it from both sides so that you. All right. So we'll just uh, blow dry that real quick. That's the first coat. All right. So then if I want this panel a little darker, I'll go over a second coat, right? I want this one a little bit darker than the other one. So I'll just, and I like to make my panels blotchy. Like they'll be lighter up here, darker down here. Um, just gives it a little bit more character and light to it. Like I, and um, these are dark, so I'm gonna cover these a little bit more. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see in the in the. Yeah, you can. Um, just a little darker there, a little lighter there, and it just gives it some life to it. it just makes it a little bit more. I guess alive would be the right word. Um, lived in. 
So, now, these are pretty dry, so what I'll do is, like, I want this little square here to be real dark. A lot darker than the others. So, I'll just put a little paint on, a little tape on. And we'll go over it one more time with it. One or two, maybe. That's all it is. I mean, it's pretty simple. Um... We'll dry it and we'll take tape off and see how it looks. Like you don't have to coat it, okay? You, like if you coat it, it's gonna stand out and make it look bad, but just just so cookie cutter and I don't know, I don't know what the word is, but yeah. I'm loving this. This is looking good to me. Yeah, I'm real happy with that. You know, if you can see in the video, you have... Yeah, you can see it. Darker here, lighter up here, darker here, lighter up here. A little bit of contrast. I don't know if that's the right word, but... A little bit more, just to make things a little stand out a little bit different not so uniform because honestly no paint on any ship is uniform it's worn in different ways especially the way ILM painted things man they just like the sand crawler it's just multiple shades you see that's just that that stands out see so yeah that's we're at that point right now and next they're gonna do some uh, concrete to give it some add some more colors to it my, I just was on the phone with, my, with Jason and on my from my from Rogue One and uh, we we're just talking about how you know these these models they're not just one color like they're multiple colors that are layered and layered you know like I was just doing I just got done doing ATST okay and you know, if you don't know any better, like, you paint, paint it, right? And then you can add chipping, right? Chipping colors with a dark gray or a black or whatever. And it looks good. But do, do sponge chipping with light gray, dark gray, rust, um, a little bit of black and even white. And you have so many different layers of chipping um, and that stand out and just bring a, a model to life you know so there, see. love it all right moving on i'm happy with that and we'll get back to the studio scales what size one this is my little little one that i what's funny is i got the little one for myself and the big one for, for a customer and i end up liking the big one i didn't think i would like the big one but i do um but it's still too big for my, for what I have planned. But yeah, I'm loving that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Beauty. Moving on. All right, next step. So, where we're at right now is, I'm still working on the cockpit. It's been kind of a pain in my ass. Uh, the uh, canopy. A little difficult to work with and I'm still trying to figure out how to get it to stay in there. I don't really want to glue it. I don't really want to cut this. They're pretty much. Do you really zoom in on them?
there's the replacement is problem is this is not for the a-wing that i am making this is for a different one this one has red red squares on it whereas mine has red mine has gray panels on it and some of these work on the the, the kit that i'm doing some of them don't so we're just going to put on the ones that will work um like I know these bottom ones will work, that'll work, this'll work, this'll work, these triangles will work. A bunch of them do, but the ones that I really want to work are, there's one here and here and here, and that I would love to do, but I don't have those stickers. So we're just gonna make do, put on what we have, call it a day. So also, uh, I just went out this morning and bought this micro saw solution that uh, will soften your decals and, reform, and conform it to the surface so it looks better. It doesn't stand out as much as a decal would. Um, and then I'm going to weather over top of them so that they don't stand out. So I'm just going to show you one, uh, show you how to do one just to give you an idea how it works. And we're gonna do this one, which, uh, like I said, big fingers, small decals, not a good combination. So we're gonna try our best not to mess this up. We've already messed up one on another recording, which I deleted, and now we're gonna try this one. Um, so, put the water, let it soak and put a little bit of this solution on the spot so that it surfaces is moist and then what we do is get out the decal without messing it up probably should have used a shower dish but it is what it is um, you don't have to work that fast because it will stay wet and it'll move around pretty decently. So we're just going to slide it on like that. And you can even sometimes move it around if you use a little bit more water to get to go where you want it to go so without ripping it. But for now, this is good, and we will come back. All right, man. This is where we are at. 
It's basically done. Um, still have to just add the bottom fins, which I'll do last because it's easier just to mess with it um, without worrying about them breaking off. Uh, did all the weathering, did all the staining. I'm pretty happy with how those turned out. The cockpit is pretty decent. I still gotta put this little extender thing that sticks out. Um, yeah, real basic on the freaking pilot. Not much to them. Um, you I know I jumped ahead a little bit, but um, we did. I did. I did all the the weathering. I'm pretty happy with that. Like that turned out better than I. Pretty good. Um, yeah, so it is on its way. Um, currently, right now, fiddling with the uh, canopy, which goes on there, I'm not sure. I've just been shaving it down a little bit, shaving it down a little bit, so it pops right underneath there, and I think I'm pretty damn close. I'm just waiting for it to dry a little bit so I can get it it's stuck in there. Hopefully it works. I I get scared doing those. Um, yeah, this is about ready to ship out to somebody. Uh, it did work. I also did another one, a smaller one, at the same time. Any idea? So that's the smaller one, and that's the bigger one. One for myself and one for a friend. It basically looks the same. Although I did a little bit more on the, uh, I made him look more like an A-wing pilot than the other one did, because kind of went with how the original model was. Uh, back lights up, which I'm really happy with. Let's see if we can make this light. And the cords underneath. Eh, we'll worry about it later. Um, in the final pictures. But yeah, this is this is where we're at right now. End of the line. About to move on to the cloud car. I'm really happy with it. I thought I would really like the smaller one better. But I actually find myself actually liking the bigger one better. Um, I, it's, a, it's a big shit for... Uh, like I said, I, I feel like sometimes the, the ships that are more important to me should be the larger ones in my collection. But um, I do like how that one turned out. A little bit more than this. They're basically the same, but a little bit more. So next and final step before the finish and ship, which I'm hoping to get shipped out this week, is I am going to head over to my neighbor's house and... Um, we're going to design the base for it and video that and video it cutting on the laser. We'll speed that up um, just kind of show what it looks like as it's going along. But yeah, I'm really happy with this. Yeah. All right, man. Next step and then uh, it'll be finished and we'll move on to car. car. Okay, end of the line. Finally done. Um, it's actually been pretty fun to make. Surprisingly, I wasn't really looking forward to doing a resin kit again, but, um, I think it turned out pretty decent. Kind of skipped over the video parts of, of the weathering and stuff, but I'll do that in the next one. <coughs> it's, um, I just got too carried away. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. These were a bear. To get on they were just brutal um getting the angle right making it work it's just it was rough and the canopy oh i i really hate doing the canopies because if you go too far you messed it up and you gotta form another one so uh, I really, really like that. I like that better on this one than on my other one, the one I just did. Um, just a lot of fun. Just ready to, finally ready to go. 
shipped to the guy who commissioned me to do it. Uh, I'm pretty happy. It's been a fun process. Um, and, uh, yeah. Just got to build the right stand for it. That's not the real stand. It's a big baby. It's a hunker. It's uh, pretty big. I mean, I bear my hand to it. It's big. Uh, get, grab my other one. I grabbed the lassie one. I got two of them. Well, it looks bigger in the video, but it, it's actually a lot smaller than than uh, the studio scale one. It's like half the size. But turned out pretty much exactly the same. I'm happy with that. This one's mine. So, on to the next project, which is cloud car. All right, man. Hope you enjoyed the video. Just give me a, maybe give me a little comment how I can make it a little better. Or if it's sucks, whatever. <laughs> I appreciate everything. Um, I really like the back. I'm really a fan of the design of that. I mean, it's just cool how the wings are slightly angled. And you have these rings on the back of the jets. Everything lights up, but I'm not going to fiddle with the battery on the camera. It's too much of a pain in the butt with one hand. So... Thanks for watching and uh, on to the next one.